Stag Nation, welcome back to the channel. As we know, our financial system is evolving. We are moving to a higher standard, something more superior. Something more transparent. Yes. Decentralized are not controlled by any one entity. No ego involved, no politics involved, just pure mathematics. Bitcoin is the name of this superior asset. It's in head-on competition with some behemoths. Massive, massive players in the game. Visa, MasterCard, and so on. How is it looking double O? What are we talking about today with this Lightning versus MasterCard and all the other uh, contaminators of the world? <laughs> Let's just say one of them requires major buildings, major infrastructures around the world, destroying the environment. Mm. And the other one is just simply assessing renewable energy to create a strong asset that is verifiable. Yeah. That is not made up out of tin here. And matter of fact is that the transaction does not require Eddie, Johnny, that bank, that Swift system, mm. all that stuff. What yeah. do you say? Third parties or intermediaries? That's what you call them. All the right. other one is just straight on you and I. Boom. It sounds to me like the one that is just you and I, it seems like it's just a very direct system where it's just, it's almost like it's cash, right? It if does. I have $10 in cash and I just mm -hmm. give it to you, that is super efficient. It's been like that since, since and before the banks, before the bankers took over mm. money. Or, or I could give that money to somebody else and then tell them to pass it on to you. Mm. But then if that person is available on Sunday and then you probably get the money on Monday. What if that, that person decides not to give you the real money and take a chip of it and give you a <sighs> fake version of it? Dang, dang, dang. Sounds like we have some problems with third party intermediaries, mm. okay? Not being able to go directly. You see, with Bitcoin, one of the major arguments against it is that Bitcoin is not efficient. Mm. for payments so they say so they say that is fine not a problem but i don't think that bitcoin was designed to be for payments it was designed to be this platform this solid decentralized platform mm. where other things can be built on top of it tell them repeat that because a lot of people think that bitcoin is just this asset where you just yes. see the chat and it just makes you money it does that too and i really like that part of it <laughs> it's a multifaceted asset this is why we say it's superior money too right but it is also a network where you can build applications on top of it. And this is where lightning comes into play. Tell them. If you're familiar or you may not be familiar, let me bring you up to speed. So the lightning network, essentially it is a means, a let's call it an application, right? Mm. Designed on top of Bitcoin, built on top of Bitcoin. Think about it this way. You have your iPhone mm -hmm. and then there is apps on your iPhone. Mm. You see your iPhone is not the fitness app. But because you have an iPhone, you can now build and design a fitness app on top of your iPhone. Bitcoin is the iPhone. Lightning is now this app on the iPhone. Let me add to it. Add Bitcoin to it is then. the internet that the iPhone is using for the iPhone to even exist. That's even deeper layers. So now then, when you have this lightning network on top of Bitcoin, what it does is that it allows us to be able to facilitate speed up transactions okay. and allow a whole lot more people to be able to make these transactions on the Bitcoin network at the same time. This is what they want to call scaling. Mm? As a matter of fact, transaction does not have to be just money. Yes. You can transact information. You can send messages, email, video, right? email. Are you guys not familiar with email? Email is something like that. Now, one of the biggest things with transactions is always fees as well. Lightning takes care of that. So let's run down just through some of these benefits mm. that you get with Lightning Network built on Bitcoin over your traditional systems like MasterCard. Swift system. Etc. Right? Let's begin with speed. With the Lightning Network, we know that right now transactions are instant. Actually quicker than you would pay with, uh, say, Visa or something like that. Even if you really went to the store and did like a Lightning payment, it is instant. It's and it's final settlement as well. Boom. Instead, yeah. in terms that you and I get that instant notification. Yeah. Whereas MasterCast, they got to go verify. Even though you think that is there, yeah. there's still an old verification between the third parties and the fees exactly. involved. And the fees on this now, which we carry on from there, fees is the next thing as well. And these fees on the Lightning Network are quite low. In fact, sometimes it's free. Why is that, you would say? Isn't it uh, something that there should be an infrastructure? You see, with the banks, mm -hmm. right? 
like you had mentioned at the beginning of the show, these people have infrastructure. You have a building, you have employees to take care of, you have servers you have to maintain, you have trucks that have to come carry the money away so that we can now go into this CBDC situation. So we're looking at diesel being consumed there. Of course, there's electricity coming to those buildings across the globe. How about those Bank right? of America fees? The Bank of America. <laughs> listen, man, this is now why they have to charge you maintenance fees that do not make sense. And they have to charge you. I feel like this could just charge you existing fee. Like, you know what? We'll just call it the maintenance fee we'll call it processing fee we'll call it administrative fee what are these administrative fees if everything is being done by computers now when it comes to lightning you can run a node i can run a node and Anybody we can, can open what they call a lightning channel yep this is a payment channel right so you can think of a payment channel as just this path say we open this path between you and i mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm just going to hold a thousand dollars of bitcoin in this channel so if James wants to pay Kenny $10, you could just send this $10 into my channel. Now I'm going to have $1,010. Mm -hmm. And then on this channel now, I can just send you $10. $10. You see, the channel now has balanced itself. And this can be done by all of us across the globe, running our own Lightning node. No third party involved, verified, fully decentralized. This is where that word comes from. You understand? And it is instant. And actually, it's uptime. <laughs> it's too stronger than MasterCard. 99.9. .9. And guess how many people can do this thing at the same time? Anybody. That brings us to scalability. You see, the Lightning Network, because Bitcoin, right? Right now, you only, I think it's like seven transactions a minute or so. Mm -hmm. And you have the situation where it's every 10 minutes, a block is found, right? You mm -hmm. can send transactions on chain. Mm -hmm. Sending transactions on chain just means that you're on the Bitcoin network sending that transaction directly. If you go into a wallet and you copy the address, you will notice a Bitcoin address, probably start like BC or mm -hmm. something like that versus your lightning address where it's going to be a really long string. But at the end of the day, it's the same thing, just like you would with Cash App, just entering a name and then sending money to that person, except just that with like Bitcoin. Just like sending an email, email exactly, address. Right? So CC. You're just copying an address, pasting it and yep. sending. So with this scalability situation, instead of waiting every 10 minutes for transactions to be found, mm. This thing will happen on that lightning level too, and it's instant, and then it will be settled on the blockchain later on. This allows everybody to be able to use lightning on a massive level. And if you try to hack it, oh, oh. man, you're going to lose so much money. <laughs> yeah. You know, they call it gimtory for a reason. Now, we all know on the Bitcoin network, if someone sent money, yeah. right? We've been on the mempool before. Yeah. You can see the transactions that are coming and going, yep, right? Verified. You can just see the address. This is pseudonymous. This means that you can see the address, you can see the amounts, but it's not private. One thing that we as a people have a right to is privacy. The level of privacy now is what we have to work on. I get it. To a certain extent, we want to maintain a level of privacy that protects us, but we also don't want to maintain a level of privacy that makes it difficult for society to be able to synchronize and function appropriately. Mm. There is this line that they use, matter of national security. Mm. Oh, <laughs> when they want to gather all your information. Yes, which is garbage, mm. okay? Because I'll tell you what is a matter of national security. China sitting over in Cuba, that is matter of national security. Mm. Buying Bitcoin has never been a matter of national security and protecting your own identity has never been. That's why we have the public and private keys. Exactly. So with the Lightning Network now, instead of having this pseudonym configuration, mm. since you're sending money into this channel, it seems to me, and actually, furthermore, if you look into splicing, right, there's now these ways where not only are you getting into a Lightning channel where there's all these other coins there, you could also swap between these channels, which acts essentially as some sort of a coin join on Lightning. So Chainalysis and the IRS and whoever these people are, are going to have an interesting day, a few day trying to be able to... Uh, you mean those 87,000 IRS agents that were supposed to go after the rich, but yeah. it's not coming after them? <laughs> With the crypto guns. Investors. I think these people will find out that is a failed strategy because Bitcoin is a peaceful war. You cannot run up on anyone and, and, and take the Bitcoins from them if you don't have those secret keys. Furthermore, you cannot run up on Americans and take their guns. So good luck with that plan. What else can we say, sir? About the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network compared to this MasterCard situation because the battle is here and I think Bitcoin is fully on the plate. I think that's part of what BlackRock might have said. If you're an investor and you're investing in BLK, which yeah. is the BlackRock stocks, we still got to live in the fiat world. And yeah. of course, we also have to focus on the future. Is that they understand the, the complexity of the traditional system, what it takes to secure the traditional system, 
And now Bitcoin simplifies that with mm. solutions like the Lightning Network and the Bitcoin blockchain design by itself, no peer-to-peer design. You were talking about that security aspect, matter of national security. It's actually with the algorithms and now without some of the intro- introduction of AI into the Lightning Network. Yep. It's a lot more secure than Ethereum could ever imagine. It's a lot <laughs> more secure than the SWIFT system that's getting active because each time they've tried, yeah. all they've done is just created another pivot, yeah. which is why you have Bitcoin Silver, Bitcoin Gold. Oh yeah, Bitcoin Cash, like, Bitcoin a, cash. like a head fork or yeah, something it, like that. It, it will automatically create a fork. Yeah. Right. So that is one of the most important things that you have to start thinking about. Like, what is this thing called Bitcoin and the Lightning Solution? Now, why is it necessary? Because it's a lot better than everything else out there right now. And it's, it's not about the price action, what you see on the exchange. It's actually about what the technology itself is fixing. Absolutely. It's changing a lot. Speaking of things that is fixing, point of sale systems is one of those, right? Mm. Um, having that ability to, as a business, run alternative point of sale systems that do not charge uh, these predatory fees. Because I think right now, point of sale systems, you're paying like 2.5%, mm-hmm. at least plus a fee for every transaction. Most of the time, this gets passed down to the customer. I think that is one place where we're seeing an advantage. And of course, just the security itself is something that uh, we can definitely gain from for sure, because we've seen what happens with this traditional system. I mean, the traditional systems, they've all been hacked, right? Yep. Bitcoin is, you know, this is new technology. The Lightning Network is new technology. There are some things that, yes, we can still find some nuances and so on and so mm-hmm. forth with the Lightning Network. <laughs> but I will tell you, uh, MasterCard also had some nuances at the point when they started. This is new technology. There is room for growth. Mm. The unknown is still out there. We cannot say the same for MasterCard. This is fully owned, controlled, and managed by a specific group. You know, Visa, for example, can handle 24,000 transactions per second. Yeah. Right? Bitcoin is handling 65,000 plus <laughs> per second. <laughs> In his baby phases. And this In is his just, baby phases. This is, one, this is one of the layer two networks. Imagine all the, the future layer twos that are to come yeah. after Lightning. Exactly. So, that is to say, imagine the opportunity. We were looking for opportunities forward-looking opportunities right Mm -hmm. this is it this is it this is that neighborhood where just a few houses have been built and now you realize that there's going to be a shopping center and everything else because a bunch of people are going to move this is that i have nothing else to add to that double up final words adoption one word for adoption right now i know people don't want to like that term i don't even like that term Mm -hmm is BlackRock. This company is the company that owns literally every company on earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even owns nations. If they adopt it like we think they're about to adopt it. That cannot be ignored. Because I think, uh, so one thing that, one change they made was this Surveillance Act. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm getting a, understanding more about what that is. It's just to be able to show that if BlackRock said they bought $10,000 worth of Bitcoin, they can cross-check that on NASDAQ and on Coinbase. Mm-hmm. So Coinbase actually has to buy that big For real. For real. That is serious. <laughs> that is serious. This is no paper money. Listen, man, you could be Bitcoin maxi all you want, but we're not always going to get these things the way we want it. You can't back right? pull this, baby. <laughs> yeah, because at the same time, if we're going to be straight fair, it is also up to BlackRock to own Bitcoin how they want to. It's open for everyone. So they're allowed to do whatever they want to do. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible one. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. We are on Twitter, uh, Stackfin, and uh, also on uh, where are we are, Spotify, Stack. Yep. Right? YouTube, of course. YouTube, YouTube of course. YouTube. Please like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Until next time, brazen out. Double O.